Like, comment, share. Hello, it's Alex with Squiller's Delight. We're at the store getting stuff. Well, I'm the cart pusher. And uh, we're just getting some stuff. We've got a cart full of green leafy thingies and some fruit. Right now I'm following my wife around. We have a list, but... Um, she has her own method to the madness, so just follow. That's all I do, just follow. <laughs> all right, so one of the things that we're looking at here is all of the rubs and sauces and stuff like that and marinades. And you want to get something that's a little bit lower in sodium if you can, um, especially if you're a minority, because salt is one of the leading causes of high blood pressure in people. Um, so we're just looking. Oh, I see tiger sauce too. There's tiger sauce here. Johnny Trigg puts this on ribs. I believe that's what he puts on ribs. There has also been some debate. I belong to the Meat Church um, forums here. They call it the Meat Church Congregation. I ain't my church. I got a church. Um, there's been some debate. Hand me one of those cans of tomatoes, baby. Please, just hand me a can of tomatoes. Thank you. There's been some debate about whether you put sauce in spaghetti or not. Sugar. Sugar, I'm sorry. Uh, that's not on Meat Church. That's on my YouTube feed. Whether or not you put sugar in your spaghetti or not. You don't put sugar in the spaghetti, but you put sugar in the sauce because if you don't put sugar in the sauce, then what happens is it's just like you just poured this out on a bowl of spaghetti. You have to take this acidity of the spaghetti down. And the way to do that is by adding sugar. So that's what you do with the sugar. One of the videos that I'm gonna be making is a fresh bacon video. So what I need to do is I need to get some 100% pure maple syrup get the stuff in the and on the you'll know it's pure because when you look on the back it'll just have an ingredient that just says maple syrup so that's what you want don't get this stuff here because the first thing you see on this is high fructose corn syrup High fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup. You don't want that. 100% maple syrup right out the tree. Hopefully. So, I saw a, a thing the other day that said something about how the price of chicken was going up. It's still a dollar fifty-nine here. We don't have truck fulls of people getting chickens like they were with gasoline and toilet paper. <laughs> just saw some ladies reaction to getting a pack of chicken at the new prices like this
first thing that I'm going to be showing you is I'm going to grind up some sausage for my wife uh, to make Italian sausage. And um, I want to kind of show you how I kind of lay some things out ahead of time. I won't do the seasoning until I'm ready to actually, uh, after I've ground up the sausage, I'll get the seasoning together. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of a grinding attachment or a grinding tool, a grinder. Uh, you can have a standalone grinder. Uh, we here, we have a kitchen aid. Uh, and so we have the kitchen aid grinding attachment. So it comes with the hopper where you put the actual meat into. It comes with a couple of dies for grinding. This is a much coarser grind and this is a looser grind. I don't know the terminology. Here's your actual blade, your grinding attachment. And then an auger. So the way this goes together is you just, you basically take this hopper, you take your auger, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick the auger into the attachment there. And you see it kind of spins around there. Hopefully you can see that. Then what you do is you take your blade and it goes right on there. And then finally, since we like the kind of a, 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 a bigger, thicker uh, strands of the grind, the ground up meat, um, you start with a coarse grind. If you want to make so a sausage that you're going to stuff, you start with a, a looser grind and then you grind a much coarser grind. So we've got all of this together. And then you just put that on there and you've got your grinding attachment ready to go. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, the, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to stick this in the freezer. It needs to go in the freezer because you want this to be absolutely cold, absolutely cold. <clears throat> so I won't need this one. And then also with the foods, the, the kitchen aid, also with the kitchen aid attachment, comes with a couple of horns that you can stuff your sausage with. So what you do is you, you take this off, you take this out, you take that, and then you put your, you take this out. Actually, I, I've only stuffed sausage with this one time, so forgive me. I think that's how you do it, but I can't remember. It's been a while since I've used this thing, so as far as like for stuffing sausage, I only stuffed sausage with it one time. I don't think that's right, but but basically, you know, once you get it all situated, this is what it would look like. As far as the inner workings, I gotta remember how to do that. But uh, what you do is then you would put your sausage casing over the top of this, or the top of this one if you're making like breakfast sausages, like the links and stuff. You put your casings over the top of this, wet it up, put your casings over it, and then you just stuff your sausage. I probably don't have that set up the right way, y'all, but it doesn't matter because I very hardly ever stuff sausages because the wife uses it for spaghetti and meatloaf and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so I'm going to take this and put that into... And what I do with this, I just usually put this, these two in there, and I'll put you in there because you're extra. And I just zip lock that up, and I put that back in the box. This is going to go in the freezer time now. Now we're going to wash our hands as we usually do. We are going to cut that up. I'm going to carve that up. For this, you're going to need a very sharp knife, straight edge knife. 
um, there's a, some history behind this particular blade that I'll tell you about in a minute. The other thing you're going to need is somewhere to put your meat in. Get you some gloves. You're not going to season this up. You're going to season that up while you're doing it because you're going to grind it. And when you grind it, then you'll season it up after you get it all ground up. So the first thing I'm going to do, put my gloves on. And then I'm going to take this bad boy over. Just picked this up today at uh, our local neighborhood um, Kroger owned Baker Super uh, Store. And it's about eight and a half pounds, or well, eight and a three quarter pounds, or eight and a quarter pounds almost. And right now it's at $2.99 a pound. And today's the 15th of May, 2021. So, cost about 25 bucks for this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of the bag. I'm going to um, take this. I'm going to wash this off after I get it out of the cryovac bag. Again, I've talked about washing meat in other videos. Wash your meat, people. And once we get this, uh, it's, it's a bone in with a nice little fat cap on the top there. And you want to have a little bit of fat for sausage. You don't want to have a ton, but you want to have some. So some of this I'll cut off and it'll go bye bye. And some of it I'll keep, you know, in the sausage uh, for the fat content. And right there is the bone right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the bone right there. And so I can carve that bone out of there and we can save that bone for like a stew or beans or soup or whatever. So I can do that. So next, what I'll do is I'll go take this, wash it, pat it dry, put it in here, transport it back over here, and I'm going to carve it up into pieces. All right. So we've got this pork uh, butt all dried and patted down and stuff. It's got a little moisture in it, and that's fine. So I'm going to grab some more gloves. And then I'm going to tell you a quick story about this knife. Um, <clears throat> you want to have your pan nearby because what you're going to do is you're going to carve this up and then you're going to put the pieces into squares that will fit into that small hole, uh, strips or squares that will fit into that small hole for your grinder. So let me get my gloves back on here. And then I'll get the cutting and tell them the story. Okay, so <clears throat> get my other glove on here. And I actually forgot that I had this knife here. It feels very dull though. Somebody's been using this knife because I'm gonna use this knife one time. Um, you don't wanna have this really thick, heavy fat cap on there. You want pieces of it. And so I'm going to cut most of it off, but what I'll probably do is I'll chop it up into smaller pieces. And then one thing you don't want to do is what I just started actually doing <laughs> is you want to cut away from you when you're carving with a straight edge knife. This knife is always fairly sharp. And so my wife one time was cutting some stuff with this knife and she cut her finger and she needed stitches. That's how sharp this knife is. So the story behind this blade, <clears throat> I've actually had this blade, ooh, 22 years now. That's how old this blade is. I'm gonna tell you why I got this blade, when I got this blade. <clears throat> I got this blade in the year 1999 and I got it the week my father passed away. Um, 
my wife and I, we were living in an apartment complex and we had just kind of moved. We had been there oh, about a year and a half. And uh, this is before the kids and everything else. And so uh, we weren't even married at the time. We were actually uh, engaged to be married. Um, and I needed a, I needed a knife. Um, and I got this blade at a place called, well, the same place I got this, actually I got this pork butt from, a uh, Baker's Supermarket. And um, what, I, what I did was I, I made sure I wanted to keep this knife. And so this knife has been around for a very long time. It's always cut very sharp and very true. Um, I've sharpened it over the years. It's a good knife, but it's got a little bit of sentiment. It's got a lot of sentimental value for me because it's, you know, I got this knife right around the time my father passed away. So, so that's a little bit of history. So when you see me using this knife, this is the knife that I got with the, the week that my father passed away. All right. So some of this, the, the more kind of creamier fat we're going to use, we're not going to use this rubbery fat here. That's not what you want to use in your sausage. Um, I'm not going to use all of that because it, it just won't render down. But you can see if you look at the striations in there, look at that right there. You can see that, right? And for those that don't know, just a tip, when you go to the store and you buy country style ribs, you're basically buying a cut up pork shoulder. That's all country style ribs really are. All right. So if we're going to use this, some of this, we've got to really cut it up really, f you know, kind of finer and smaller chunks like this, because this rubbery kind of skinny kind of stuff, it doesn't really grind well. And it makes these little stringy kind of, but you need some of this fat in there. So I'm going to throw some of it in there. It's not all going to go in there. I might just get the parts that are attached to some actually pieces of meat. <clears throat> so, so just kind of cube it up like that. And then we'll get to the actual meat. We're going to, you know, make longer strips of cuts in, in the meat. this bone here you want to use this bone for soups or stews or you know something like that a good pot of beans you throw that in there and let her let her go um instapot would be wonderful too that meat will just fall right off the bone i intentionally left some meat on there you want to leave some meat on there so we've got that and so that whole eight pounds of pork shoulder minus the scrap is now cut up and this will go into the freezer until it's firm but not frozen all right so now we're going to be um, grinding up our meat we've got our seasoning here and this is black pepper um, this is fennel seed anise garlic Thyme. There's some salt in there. 
uh, oregano and parsley, I mean, uh, parsley flake, crack, uh, red pepper. Um, I think that's the anise. <laughs> and then we've got some paprika. Uh, I think this is actually oregano right there. So, or cilantro. Oregano. That's oregano. So, we've got our seasonings raring and ready to go. We've got a catcher for our meat. Now, we're going to take the meat. And this is the meat right here. I'm going to transfer it from here to here. We've got a pusher. And we're going to last hook up the food saver attachment here. This has been in the freezer for a couple of days, actually. So all you do well, first off, you have to put this little nut back. Right on there. You stay. Then you fasten the little nut in there. Like this. This is ready to go. You gotta work. Now you're on a clock. Now you're on a clock. Because you are um, warming this stuff up. There we go. That doesn't work. So you just start heating meat in there. It'll spit out and make a little bit of a mess. What you want to do is you want to fill up this little hopper with meat. And you can see it's starting to come out. Take this little hopper and just push. And out it comes. And as you push stuff in there, you just replace it with more meat. and we're gonna take this little bit that's left there and then you just take the grinding attachment off of your grinder if you've got a KitchenAid or if you have a regular grinder you clean up your stuff and there you go so now I'm gonna get a really large bowl but before I do that I need to take these ingredients here and mix everything up just do it with my hand here best part of this whole thing is to uh, is once you get everything seasoned and ground up you get to make a test patty that's the best part can fry yourself up a test patty fry yourself up a test patty and make everybody jealous but before we get too into what we're gonna do here 
with the dry seasoning, we're going to take this red wine vinegar and we're going to mix that into the meat and make it sticky so that this mix can adhere, adhere to the, to the meat. There we go. Smells wonderful. Now, I didn't put any cayenne pepper in there because the family likes it a little bit um, less, you know, mild, more mild. So, yep. So there we go. It's got that reddish tinge you can see right there already. So, I'm going to grab a bowl and we're going to mix this bad boy up. We need three tablespoons of this red wine vinegar. Three tablespoons. I've got my tablespoon right here, ready to go. I'm just gonna dump this meat a little at a time. So I'm gonna do this in batches here. Actually, I'll just dump it all in there. I'm trying to keep it kind of loose and I use the that's coarse grain, uh, or dye, I should say. I'm gonna get a good sized mixing bowl for when you mix this up. Because you're gonna have to uh, keep it all um, kind of loose so that everything can get in there. We'll take our Red wine vinegar. One. Two. Two and a quarter. Three. For now. I have a feeling I'm gonna need some more. Now, I'm just gonna start mixing this in. On the top. And then you start incorporating it into the meat. <clears throat> That's it. So I've got this all mixed up. So next what I'm going to do is get, I hear my, my shadows up, up there. Get you, you know, like a meatball size patty. Just make yourself a little test patty here. And we're gonna fry this up. Right smell. All right, so we've got a test patty. I'm gonna fry this up, taste it, see if it needs more seasoning. All right, so let's make a piece of sausage here. I've got my cooking spray here so nothing sticks. Got my patty. Low to medium heat. It's a non-stick skillet, but it's a new skillet. This is one of the skillets I got for my wife for Mother's Day. She hadn't had a chance to use it. So I want to make sure I don't have anything sticking to it, but it seems to be doing okay. You can tell, you can look at this and tell and see that there's some um, uh, the redness of the paprika has the 
sausage color the right way. Let's go ahead and flip it. And what we'll do is we'll just cook this until it's done. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's try this, shall we? It's got the right color, but I think it's going to be a little mild. Very mild. I need some more. Oh, wait a minute. Need some more pepper, I think. If you don't like spicy, this is perfect for you. It's still flavorful. But it doesn't have any spice to it. So, well, as far as spiciness, so it needs a little bit more red pepper flake and black pepper. All right, this is round two. Um, I made some adjustments and I added some seasoning. It's always easier to add seasoning than it is to take it out. So, I made a thinner patty this time. So, this smells more like I'm accustomed to. <clears throat> saver bag to keep a good chunk of this meat in. I need uh, another bag so I'm gonna while that's cooking I'm gonna go ahead and it smells like Italian sausage <laughs> It's got a stronger smell than the last one. Here we go. That's Italian sausage. <laughs> That's the taste I was looking for. See all the seasoning in there. Mm -hmm. This, this is what kind of sausage should taste like. So, mission accomplished. <clears throat> Here we are. Two pounds, two pounds, pound, and a pound. Six pounds of Italian sausage. One uh, pork shoulder. Again, these are one pound bags. And these will just go right on the deep freezer. Well, these are going to the freezer uh, because uh, these get used up really quick. So, I'm going to bed, y'all. This is homemade Italian sausage, vacuum sealed in a food saver bags. And it's really good. So this will sit and um, gather up uh, the, the, the seasonings and everything when you bust open this bag. Oh. 
wonderbar. So, like, share, subscribe this video. I will post the recipe uh, in the uh, in the uh, comment section. Uh, again, this is not my original recipe. It's just a generic recipe I got from a guy. I think his name's E Money Blue. And so, uh, yeah, check his channel out. He makes a lot of sausage over there. But this is Italian sausage, and it's uh, and it's uh, homemade form. Peace.